In Hungary, more people than ever before are protesting against Prime Minister Viktor Orban's government. Have you heard about this? I was wondering what exactly is going on. Is Orban's regime in danger? And why are his own values now backfiring against him? So many questions. Let's have a look. First things first, what exactly has so many people riled up? In April last year, Hungarian President Katalin Novak pardoned him. And the big deal is, he was a former deputy director of a children's home. His boss committed systematic sexual abuse of children, and he helped cover it up. The story only came to light after being revealed by this independent news website. Now, three high-ranking politicians have been forced to resign. The president, one of her advisors, and the former minister of justice. All three were involved in the pardon decision and were pretty close to Orban. The reasons for the pardon have not been made public. And officially, Orban didn't know anything about the matter. Some people don't believe him, and there are growing calls for more transparency. Here's what young people in Budapest told us. That's precisely why over 100,000 people took to the streets in recent weeks, many of them young people. And it was Hungarian influences who organized the protests. Not only because of the abuse scandal, but also to criticize underlying grievances in the country. All right, scandal, protests. So what makes these ones so remarkable? After 14 years of Orban's government, many Hungarians are done with politics, also due to the general lack of alternative options. So why is the scandal getting so big? Ellen Bose is a political scientist and a lecturer at the Andrássy University in Budapest. She says that there are three reasons for the backlash. Zum einen betrifft er quasi die höchste politische Spitze des Systems und es geht um eine moralische Frage, die also über die Lager hinweg, über die Generationen hinweg, über Interessengruppen hinweg eben für Empörung sorgt. Zum anderen betrifft äh, der Skandal einen fundamentalen Bestandteil der Identität des Systems Orbans oder auch der ideologischen Grundlage, könnte man sagen. What Allen means is, Viktor Orban likes to present himself as the defender of Christian Europe and sees himself as the antithesis to what he calls the gender ideology from Brussels. Which is why he's introduced a series of laws that restrict the rights of queer people in order, he claims, to protect children and family values. A prime example, the child protection law introduced by Orban in 2021. To understand this in greater depth, I contacted my colleague Dora Di Sherry from the Hungarian Department of Deutsche Welle. Wenn man das einfach nur so durchliest, dieser Gesetztext, dann sieht man ganz klar, dass eigentlich Pädophilie wird mit, mit äh, Homosexuellen wirklich gleichgestellt. Und das, was auch die EU kritisierte, was Experten kritisierten. Equating queer people with pedophiles, that sounds pretty outrageous to me. The EU even challenged it with a lawsuit. By the way, Hungarian experts say there's actually no need for new child protection laws. What is needed are money and infrastructure to implement existing laws. The dire condition of children's homes, for example, is one of the issues being raised by protesters. That puts Orban's credibility in question. So what's next? A strategy? Job done, move on. First, he publicly condemned the pardon scandal culprits and ensured they were replaced. He also announced even more child protection laws. We contacted the Hungarian government to ask for details, but got no reply. Will these measures be enough to get the Hungarian public off his back? The Lage is ja durch die Rücktritte der beiden verantwortlichen Politikerinnen zumindest intern beruhigt. Also ich denke, im Kreis seiner Anhängerschaft ist damit dieser Skandal erstmal erledigt. Ob das aber ausreicht, um jetzt die Bevölkerung zu beruhigen, ist noch die große Frage. So far, it doesn't seem so, with the protests still going strong. But Oban's strategy for dealing with scandals have proven pretty efficient in the past and could do the trick again. My colleague Dora told me why. Orban und die Regierungsvertreter versuchen das wirklich so klein zu halten, wie es nur geht, so kurz zu halten, wie es nur geht. Und das dadurch, dass sie wirklich auch 
die Medienwelt in Ungarn so dominieren und so prägen, das gelingt ihnen auch. Another thing helping Orban, the next elections are some time away in 2026 and the opposition parties remain pretty weak. But there's still one major worry for him, the European elections which take place this year in June. They'll show how much damage was done to Orban's party by the scandal. And this election is especially important to him. With many European countries shifting to the right, he's hoping to gain influence in Brussels. Okay, so what's the takeaway? A sexual abuse scandal has led to the biggest protests of Orban's reign. With the help of the Hungarian media, he's trying to sweep the issue under the carpet. But it's not going quite as planned. His credibility is dented, but he will most likely not lose power. The European elections in June will show how badly it has really hurt him. This was the first video of our new series Enter Context. On which topics in Europe do you want more context? Let me know in the comments.